Okay, welcome to part three of our shock series. I know it's been a long time, but uh, uh, life gets in the way sometimes. Anyways, we're going to talk about uh, tuning handling using shocks. So let's move on to Mercy Crew Chief. Uh, for this episode, we're going to be using the uh, touring car model. Uh, for those who uh, want to follow along, you can download the program from the uh, website and uh, install it in a free trial mode, <laughs> and you can do everything that I'm going to do here today. Anyways, most people uh, don't pay a lot of attention to shocks. They build them, they fill them full of oil, and then they kind of forget them, uh, which in itself is not a bad thing, but uh, you can do things with your shocks to improve the handling of your car. Uh, that said, um, shocks can control the uh, car and chassis over a fairly wide range of settings. Um, but if you're looking to try and gain that extra one or two tenths of a second a lap, uh, shocks may be the way to do that. Uh, you don't want to try and fix serious handling issues with shocks. Uh, if you've got a serious oversteer, understeer uh, situation, you want to fix that with your uh, springs and anti-roll bars and roll centers uh, before you move on to trying to do anything with your shocks. Shocks are a fine-tuning uh, component. So, um, Okay, so first thing we want to understand is that shocks only affect the handling when the suspension is moving. So that basically means corner exit and entrance. Those are the only times when the shock is actually going to be affecting the uh, um, response of the chassis. Uh, Mid-corner, when the chassis is fully rolled, <coughs> the velocity of the shock is zero. So you're not getting any benefit from the shock whatsoever. So the starting indicator for, for uh, shock damping is our damping ratio down here. And this value for um, touring cars is generally in the range of 0.4 to 0.6. Uh, if you want to know more about what this damping ratio means, you should watch uh, episode one. that talks a little bit more about how these numbers are actually uh, created and, and what they actually mean. But essentially, the higher the damping ratio, the more damping in the system, the lower the damping ratio, the less damping. So with less damping, you're going to get faster response. Uh, with more damping, you're going to get slower response. So the easiest way to think about shock damping and what it does is by how it affects the overall suspension stiffness. So the way I look at it is um, increasing your damping, increasing this damping ratio, essentially stiffens the suspension during those transition periods. So it's similar to increasing, let's switch over to our shock, it's similar to in increasing a spring rate or an anti-roll bar, but it only operates when the chassis is moving. So if you increase the front damping, that should make the uh, or provide less grip for the car at corner entry and exit. Uh, if you decrease the damping, opposite effect, more grip. Uh, similarly with the rear, uh, if you increase the damping, that stiffens the rear suspension during corner entry and exit and that's going to um, slow the response and weight transfer due to the damping is higher. So you're going to get, if you increase it, you're going to get uh, less grip in the rear. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to split this into two sections here. Uh, basically, we're going to look at just changing the damping ratio and not changing any of these other values here. So the way you do that is with shock oil and pistons. So if we change to a <coughs> excuse me lighter uh, shock oil, let's go down to 300 CST. Okay, you see our damping ratio has dropped off down to 0.37. If we increase it to say 800, I'm just using big numbers here so you can see the changes. Um, 
you're up over 0.6 now, you're 0.63. So similarly, uh, we can change our pistons. So if we go to smaller holes, we're going to get higher damping. If we go to larger holes, we're going to get less damping. You can also go to more holes. So if we go to 4 by 1, essentially you can see here, four one millimeter diameter holes gives you the same damping ratio as three by 1.1. Um, if you go down to four by 1.2, you're going to get very low damping. So, and you can you can balance these. Uh, you can go and uh, increase your oil weight with a very small um, or large hole. So, if we go up to say we're going to have to go big here, so we go say a thousand. So now we've just got it up to 0.39. Probably never going to go down that low in damping, but I just want to illustrate. So let's go to the damping page and uh, yeah, save anything. And let's have a look at the damping graphs here. So we're going to do a plus or minus 45% stroke. Uh, step response this just allows you to see a little bit more clearly what's going on. So initially here we're seeing uh, our graph, this is uh, uh, in compression and then this is in rebound, this one here. So if we're uh, going to decrease the damping, so we're going to go to a lower weight oil. So let's run that. And now you can see we've got two graphs here. The blue line is the original setup that we had with the 550 oil. Now we've got the second one with the 300 oil. So you can see here we've got less damping. We've overshot where we wanted to go by a greater amount. Uh, we've got there faster because our velocities are higher. If you look at the velocity graph, you can see here the red line, we've got a higher peak velocity out of the shock, which means it's, it's getting there quicker. Uh, we can also look at flow forces, spring force, damping force, etc. Uh, etc. I'm not going to get too deep into that because I'll put everybody to sleep. You can play around with those things and have a look at them and, and you can you know, gain some insights into what exactly is going on. So the next thing that we can do, let's go back to, let's go to our, let's say we do 800, we do 100, 800. So now you can see our red line is slower than the blue line. So we Increase the amount of damping in the system, the response is slower, um, and you're going to have less grip because you essentially stiffened the, uh, stiffened the whole system up. Okay, the other way that we can change the damping without affecting anything else is with our piston sizes. <clears throat> so let's go back to our 550. Oops, 550. So our lines are overlaid again. So now let's look at going to a smaller piston. And you can see similar effect to increasing our shock oil weight, slower response. Uh, if we go to the larger piston size, larger piston hole size, now you can see we've got faster response because we've got less, less damping in the system. So in this case, we'd have faster response and more overall grip. Okay, let's go back to our setup page. Okay, so let's look at the other two ways that we can change the overall uh, damping in the system. Um, one way is changing our shock angles, and the other way is changing the spring. So first, let's look at the spring. That's the simplest one. So if we increase our uh, spring rate, we're going to have a slightly lower damping ratio because now um, we have a stiffer spring, but we have the same amount of damping in the system, so that hasn't changed. So the ratio between the, the spring rate and the uh, damping in the shock is uh, less. The other thing that happens is, as we've talked in other episodes, that we've changed a whole bunch of other numbers. So we've changed the ride frequency. This is the frequency that the chassis, or the front suspension in this case, would bounce at. Uh, we've changed our roll stiffness, we've changed our uh, roll couple, so this is going to affect the uh, uh, the overall handling as far as over understeer is concerned, and we've changed the chassis roll sensitivity. 
which is the overall chassis uh, stiffness. So making changes like this to adjust damping uh, is not the best way to go unless you really understand what these other numbers are going to do and how it's going to affect the uh, overall handling. So the other way we can do this, put this back to where we were, 2.6, um, is we can stand the shock up. So standing the shock up, we haven't changed the package. We've still got the same spring and we've still got the same amount of damping. But by standing the shock up, we've essentially stiffened the shock relative to the chassis. So again, we're changing our ride stiffness and ride frequency and our roll stiffness and roll couple and, and overall chassis uh, stiffness is all being affected by this change. So the thing that's different is now our damping is actually higher in the system. And the reason for that is because we've changed the way the shock responds to the uh, chassis movement. So <clears throat> there is um, um, what's called a motion ratio, which is the ratio of the shock movement to the suspension movement. So by standing this shock up, we've changed that relationship. So that's why this number has actually gone up. Let's have a quick look at on the damping tab. Let's see. Put this back to 45 again. So, so let's have a look at our first change that we made. Uh, we just increased the spring rate. So let's just increase the spring rate. So now you can see we've got faster response, but we've got a little less damping in the system, which is what it predicted with the damping ratio. We got a little bit more overshoot, not a whole bunch, but so we got faster response, a little less damping, but not really a huge difference. Definitely is going to give you a uh, uh, quicker reaction from the uh, chassis. So let's go back to where we were and let's look at changing our shock angle and see what that does. So now, if you remember, we had uh, higher damping in the system because of the uh, standing the shock up. So let's see what happens here. By that, you see here we've gone 17. We've increased the effective stiffness of the, the shock and damping by 17%. Let's apply that. So now you can see we're a little bit quicker response-wise, <clears throat> and we have less damping. We're not overshooting as much as we were with the uh, our base setup here that we're comparing to. So that's all I want to say at this point. I don't want to put everybody to sleep, as I've been accused of. So, so to summarize, uh, important things to take away from this little uh, exercise is that changing your shock oil uh, weight or your uh, shock pistons only affects the damping. It doesn't affect any of the other key suspension properties that we looked at over the last 10 episodes to uh, affect uh, setup. Uh, so changing your springs and shock angles, that affects damping plus a number of other key suspension properties. So you have to be aware of that fact. Um, you're, if you want to adjust your damping in your system, uh, stick to just changing oil weight and shock pistons. And in reality, you're not going to change shock pistons a lot unless you're an off-road guy. Off-road, you can make a, a lot of inroads with... Uh, uh, pack and so on by using different diameter holes and number of holes and so on. We talked about that in the last episode or episode nine. So, and shock changes as far as handling are concerned only affect your corner entry and exit. So if you increase the damping, that stiffens the suspension. So you're going to have less grip on that end of the car. If you decrease the damping, that softens the suspension. That's going to give you more grip on that end of the so that's it. I don't think I'm going to do any more setup uh, videos unless somebody has something that they'd really like to see. Uh, but for a little while here, we're going to play around with some dinos. Uh, I've been playing with dinos for a while now, and I think there's some things there that I can share with you guys that uh, may help you out. Okay, that's it.